So in today's video we're going to look at uh, house price data, uh, specifically an introduction to some of the key house price surveys. This morning the Halifax published its latest data for the UK market, um, the problem being that Halifax is just one of up to about a dozen different organisations that publish house price data. So today we'll look at five or six of the key house price surveys, take a look at why the information they present is slightly different, take a quick look at how they work and also think about how useful they are to somebody looking to buy or sell a property. Okay, first thing to remember is most of these are called surveys. So the Halifax does a survey and publishes an index which moves up or down, down more recently, based on the data that it receives. And the important thing about the word survey is it is not talking about the whole market. And that's true for all of the major organisations that report on house prices. Uh, very few, or indeed uh, virtually none of them, would claim to be completely comprehensive with the possible exception of the land registry. More about them in a moment. Next thing to realise is that each organisation is slightly different in terms of which part of a property transaction it looks at and also which properties it looks at. Uh, surveys, as the name suggests, indicate that these organisations are taking slightly different parts of the market and then coagulating data on lots and lots of different property transactions to come up with a, an average figure. And bear that in mind too, averages can be misleading. If the Halifax, for example, says in December prices dropped by 1.3%, that's an average. doesn't mean prices in your street dropped by 1.3%. doesn't mean that prices all over the country dropped by 1.3%. It just means that balancing everything out, the rises and the falls, the average movement is slightly down. So, with those caveats in mind, let's take a quick look at a typical property transaction, what happens roughly when, and then take a look at five or six of the key surveys and ask the question in basic terms, what are they trying to tell us? Okay, so you're buying a property. Where do you start? Well, the answer is, um, it takes a bit of time in the UK. So if we were to put a timeline down, this is the problem with buying property. It's not like buying a bag of oranges at Tesco. Do that and you agree the price and pay for the goods and receive them and take them home within about five seconds. Uh, that's not the case with property. Property is a registered asset. There's a list of buyers and sellers and owners ultimately. So it takes a little bit of time to get from the point where you market a property to the point where somebody's actually paid you cash for it. And that creates one or two interesting problems for the people who put out house price surveys. Which part of the transaction do you focus on? So, from the beginning, first thing I'd do if I was trying to sell my property is come up with a price. And obviously as a seller, the higher the better. So the first thing I need to do is come up with uh, an asking price, as it's called. Now, obviously, I'm going to try and sell my property for as much as I can get. The problem is, this is my initial stab at it. In the UK, typically, um, although people like to think they'll get what they ask for their property, on average, the actual price paid tends to be less than that. Um, actually, around 92-93% of the asking price. And that, of course, is because this is a negotiation. A buyer is not necessarily going to just walk in off the street and say, great, Tim, I'll pay your asking price. So, the next stage is to find a buyer. So I market my property, I know how much I want to sell it for, hopefully someone walks in through the door and makes me an offer. And with a bit of luck, as a seller and a buyer, we can come to some kind of agreement on what the property should sell for. And if that's the case, an offer is accepted. And that can obviously take a bit of time. There might be quite a few people coming through the door, looking at the asking price, thinking that's about what I thought I'd pay. They then see my rather decrepit two-bed semi and think, hmm, not quite what I was after, or I'm not paying that for it. So it can take a bit of time to even get to this stage, an offer accepted. Under English law, that's by far from the end of the story. Uh, there's a lot more to come yet, because as a buyer, fine, I have made an offer, that's been accepted by the seller. Next stage is going to be usually some sort of survey, 
Um, now, even if I'm paying cash for the property, I'm lucky enough not to need a mortgage, I'm going to want to know what sort of state it's in, and unless I'm a property expert as a buyer, I'm going to want somebody else to do that job for me, a chartered surveyor. But also, a mortgage company, if the buyer needs mortgage finance, will normally insist on it and say, before we agree to fund any part of this property, the buyer needs to get a survey done. So, typically a survey is done, then if the buyer needs it, a mortgage is approved. So, imagine I've applied as a buyer for a mortgage from uh, Nat Nationwide, let's say. Um, the mortgage approval will only come once a survey has been done and the mortgage lender is satisfied that the property is worth at least the amount I want to borrow. And then finally, you get to two stages I'll put together called exchange and completion. Now, these can come on the same day or they may not. Essentially what's happening here is the buyer has now had a survey done, they're comfortable that the property is approximately what they think they're going to buy, they've had some structural survey work done on it, or perhaps just a valuation survey, but basically that stage has been ticked off. A mortgage, if needed by the buyer, has been approved, so all the finance is in place. Exchange is exchange of contracts, and that's when purchase of a property in England becomes legally binding. Completion, if you like, is getting your hands on the keys as a buyer. So completion is tidying up the administration at the end and actually making sure the buyer can physically get in the front door. Exchange of contracts is normally where a deposit is handed over via the buyer's solicitor and at that point it's pretty difficult for a buyer to pull out. If you were to pull out after exchange of contract stage you normally lose your deposit and that can be 10 to 20 percent of the value of the property. So there's a rough map <coughs> of how a typical property transaction works, in England let's say, where do the various surveys fit in? Well, starting from the front end, asking prices. An organisation called Rightmove Now, they claim to cover 90% of marketed properties in the UK, that's pretty comprehensive, um, and if that's indeed the case, what they're suggesting is they capture what's going on right at the front end. So, are people trying to get more or less for their property? They won't necessarily achieve that price. Months down the line, after some haggling, it may be that the asking price has been dropped considerably to get a deal done, but nonetheless, this is where sellers come in and try and get as much for their property as possible, and right move, try and capture that data, and they do it through their, their members, as they're called, largely estate agents and the like, property agents. You've also got, at the front end, um, home track. Again, focusing towards the front end of the property transaction or the property chain, and again asking their, their members, normally estate agents, what sort of prices they think are achievable for the properties that they're marketing. So, quite useful surveys, quite wide ranging, but very early in the process. These are not the prices necessarily that are going to be the final prices paid when contracts are exchanged. So, moving further along the chain, once an offer has been accepted, a survey is fairly key. There are about three sorts in England. You can have a basic valuation survey, which does what it says on the tin, it just confirms that the property is worth at least a certain amount, in the opinion of a surveyor. You can have uh, the next step up, a home buyer's survey. That's a little bit more expensive, gives the buyer a few more um, tests on the property, if you like. And the most comprehensive is the structural survey, normally reserved for older properties, freehold houses. That's even more expensive and will look at things that the home buyers and valuation surveys don't, such as the actual structural state of the property, what sort of state the roof's in and one or two other bits and pieces. So you make a choice and you pay accordingly as a buyer. And here you get the Royal Institute of Chartered Surveyors producing their house price balance. That's quite closely watched. What's happening there is they're asking their members, chartered surveyors, uh, the people doing this sort of work, to come up with a kind of balance as to what's happening in the market. In a nutshell, the people doing the valuation surveys are asked, are you seeing prices rise, stay the same, or fall? And the way that works is 
imagine I were to survey my members as RICs and they tell me something like this. 30% um, of them think prices are rising. 50% of them think prices haven't moved since the last time the survey was done. And 20% of them think prices are now falling in their area. The balance says, well, that doesn't matter too much. 10% more of my members think prices are rising than falling. So the net balance, if you like, is presented as plus 10 or plus 10%. And that would be sort of bullish overall. OK, so that's the, the RICS, or Royal Institute of Chartered Surveyors survey. Then you get to mortgage approval stage. And that's where some of the bigger building societies come in. The, the two biggest, um, the Halifax and the Nationwide, They produce surveys, their, their geographic focus is slightly different, um, but basically they produce surveys and house price indices, uh, and one of those was actually published this morning by the Halifax, um, based on this stage in the process. So, important to note that they're only looking at property transactions that involve a mortgage. They are, after all, lenders, they're, they're old-fashioned, or were, old-fashioned building societies, so they're not looking at cash purchases or, or sales. and. Um, their view of the market will vary. You, you don't always expect them to produce the same number, and that's because they're looking at a slightly different mix of property and have a slightly different process for compiling their indices. They normally publish a percentage change, so they'll say that, uh, well, prices for December, once they've gathered the data, uh, rose or fell by X percent. So, um, you've got the big building societies coming in at this stage and uh, basically looking at mortgage approval. So we're a bit further down the line now. Uh, we've had offers accepted. Normally for that to happen, a survey's been done. So we're getting much closer to the end of the chain, but we're not there yet. And that's because in the UK, somebody could, in England certainly, still pull out. A buyer could still, even at this stage, say, do you know what, I've changed my mind. Or I want to renegotiate the price. Okay, so right at the end, exchange of contracts and completion. And there are a, a couple of organisations that report at this stage. One is the Department for Communities and Local Government. And the other is the Land Registry. Now, basically, these are reporting right at the end of the process. The first one up here is looking at uh, basically mortgage completions. So that's saying not only was a mortgage approved, but it's been applied to buy a property. Because don't forget, a buyer could have a mortgage approved and then just not bother to follow through. So they look at uh, mortgage completions and the land registry look right to the end of the chain. Every time you successfully buy a property, a register is updated, a central register, declaring you to be the owner and striking the seller off as the owner. And those uh, title deeds are registered and the land registry, therefore, for some people, is the most comprehensive of all these surveys because it picks up all re-registrations of property. So you might think, great, well, from now on, I'll just follow the land registry then because it's the most comprehensive survey. That wouldn't necessarily be the right thing to do because bear in mind, the gap between that and that in this country could easily be a couple of months or maybe, maybe even longer. So some people would say that whilst the land registry data is very comprehensive, it's not particularly timely in terms of what's happening in the market right now, because it might be a couple of months out of date, in effect, by the time you receive it. OK, that's the guide to the key house price indices and surveys carried out in the UK market.